So, greetings everyone. I am Dr. Monica uh, working as associate professor in NIT Pharmacy Institute, Greater Noida, which is has been affiliated to APJ Abdul Kalam University. So, today I am going to take uh, the subject that is industrial pharmacy 1, uh, which is having the code BP502T. So, in this uh, course or in this subject as I am going to take the unit number 5, so the contents which we include which are there within this unit are uh, first one as you can see in unit number 5 we are going to discuss about the cosmetics part along with that we have few of the aspects related to our pharmaceutical aerosols and the third thing which we are going to discuss is the packaging materials in science. So, mainly this whole unit number 5 has been divided into 3 modules. As you can see first module is cosmetics, second is aerosols and third one is packages. But in this lecture the contents which we are going to cover uh, is the cosmetics part. Uh, in cosmetics uh, has been divided into 3 mainly categories, one is we have skin care products, second hair care products and third we have oral care products. So, in, uh, in this lecture we will mainly focus on the skin care products which you we mainly use for the as a cosmetics part. Uh, these are mainly which you uh, uh, all of you need to cover as the cold creams and vanishing creams. So, in skin care products uh, and along with that we will cover up the introduction to cosmetics and this we will discuss about the formulation preparation of cold creams and how we can evaluate those creams in the lab. Along with that we will cover up the formulation and preparation of vanishing cream and in the last I would like to discuss about the difference between what is the difference between cold cream and vanishing cream. So, let us move towards first the part uh, first that what we mean by cosmetics, how drugs and cosmetics act define cosmetic preparations. So, cosmetics has been defined as any article intended to be rubbed, poured, sprinkled or sprayed on or introduced into the or otherwise applied to the human body or any part share of for cleansing, beautifying, promoting attractiveness and altering the appearance and includes any article which is being intended for use as a component of cosmetics. So, as you can get from this definition part that these are the mainly preparations which are used for beautifying purpose uh, for skin, hair as well as for oral cavities. So, in this case as we are going to discuss about the cold cream part, so you, uh, you must notice that cold creams are actually the preparations which are water in oil type emulsions. All of you have studied about lot of things about emulsions part that emulsions are the main products which contains oil and water and along with that we generally add emulsifying agent to our products to generate emulsions. So, cold creams actually and emulsions are further being divided into various categories like water in oil, oil in water and uh, water in oil in water type of emulsions, micro emulsions are there. But in as you can see cold creams are actually the creams which are water in oil type emulsion. That means they have oil as the external phase and water as the internal phase. And when these are being applied to the skin, uh, they mainly offer or produce uh, or uh, the uh, agent the water which has been present within this formulation gets evaporated and due to which these uh, creams are also known as cold creams as we apply these type of uh, creams to our uh, skin then the water gets eva evaporate and the invention which was being done for the cold cream was done by Galen a physician in the second century of Greece. So, uh, what uh, the original formulation of cold cream was actually prepared with three ingredients. The, those ingredients which were added to the cold cream were like rose water was there, beeswax was there and one oil was included within this formulation and that oil is known as almond or olive oil was included. So, three this um, general preparation of cold cream in this uh, in the history was prepared in, uh, using three ingredients one is rose water, second one is beeswax and third one is olive oil. So, we have water, we have oil and we have emulsifying agent that is known as beeswax. Rose water act as a water and al almond and olive oil act as a oil and beeswax act as a emulsifying agent. So, these three using these three ingredients the gallon physician formed uh, generated a formulation known as cold cream. 
the creams which were used before cold creams which are prepared by gallen will include rose water beeswax and olive oil but be, as i told beeswax is an essential component of the cream and was being used as an emulsifying agent in those preparations it but nowadays the uh, we uh, the emulsifier which we use are much more efficient as compared to the beeswax which was used previously by the various scientists creams made with only beeswax require extensive mixing and can even separate out after doing extensive mixing so uh, that's was the main reason that scientists worked a lot on other ingredients also and nowadays we have come up with the modern emulsifiers so they have very uh, that is very much effective as compared to the beeswax which was used previously when mixed with water and plant oils as i had told in my previous slide that plant oils rose water and other ingredients were used and when plant oils was used they are uh, liable to rancid and they get the creams generally get spoiled easily uh, in within few days of uh, preparation so cold creams was most often made in small batches at home at that moment of time thus small quantity uh, for overcoming such problem what uh, scientists did they tried to add um, a, 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 a a new ingredient that is known as borax which was later added to the uh, along with the beeswax into the cold cream preparation and now what we mean by uh, the cold creams which are made using beeswax along with that borax was added so when when borax is added to the uh, our cold creams what it actually does is it get dissolved in water to produce boric acid and sodium hydroxide now the sodium hydroxide which gets generated within the cream will interact with the cerotic acid which was present in the that is beeswax a free fatty acid obtained from the beeswax get react with the sodium hydroxide which generates due to the borax pres pre pre presence so it makes the that is preparation uh, the uh, product became more stable as compared to the product which was utilized before as the uh, as uh, the borax generated the sodium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide reacts with the cerotic acid which stabilizes the product and our product whatever product which we will get from beeswax borax that product will uh, is much more stable as compared to the product which was only made using the beeswax and the plant oils so uh, in this way beeswax borax cold creams came into picture and after that as borax beeswax creams were prepared these were actually white or pick and had a high luster in them and spread easily on the screen when when we apply those creams on the skin they get easily uh, they spread out and spreadability was very much high as compared to the other creams but as we were using the plant oils like almond oils still limited our the self life of our of our product like cold creams uh, because almond oil gets rancid easily and it will make the product uh, that is uh, unstable so that's why that that almond oil was being replaced later on by various scientists with petrolactam and mineral oil rather than using almond oil scientists started using uh, that is petrolactam and mineral oil within the creams so this also enhanced the self life of our product so by increase by adding borax and along with that by replacing our almond oils or our plant oil products with the uh, that is petrolactam the self life of the product got increased so this made beeswax borax uh, petrolactam cold cream ideal preparation for the industrial manufacture in the in we can use those products now they are available in the, on the industrial scale and we can get it from the market as this self life of the product got enhanced so commercialization being uh, has been done using beeswax borax and uh, petrolactam creams so in this way the we move uh, from that is just the beeswax cold cream to beeswax borax creams and after that from beeswax borax to beeswax petrolactam cream now what gave the name to this cream as cold why you say that these are the cold creams the general name of cold cream generated usually from the fact that water gets evaporated when we apply these creams cold creams were usually made in as i told in oil in our water in oil type of emulsion and when we apply these creams on the skin what happens is water gets evaporated leaving behind the solvent oil which even act as a cleansing agent also uh, on the uh, skin 
So, some chemist uh, uh, suggested that as the water gets evaporated, it gives a cooling sensation on the skin. So, we must name this cream as a cold cream. And one alternative explanation was given by various scientists that was that as we use pack pectrolectum uh, before as plant oils or were we being used within the uh, product of cold cream. So, uh, when uh, uh, old plant oils are being used the product get rancid due to which the product gets unstable and that is why uh, the scientists always suggest to keep those preparation into the cool area. And when we take that cream from the cool area and apply on the skin, it gives a cooling sensation. So, that is why these particular creams are known as cold cream. One fact was given that water evaporates and it gives a uh, that is cooling sensation and second alternative explanation was given by various scientists that as this these products are being stored at low temperature and when they when we take those products and we apply to our skin, they gives a cooling sensation when they are being applied. So, that is why they are known as cold creams also. So, this is one of the most important question generally asked by the examiner that why these uh, how, how these uh, creams got the name that is known as cold creams. So, next thing which you need to know is the formula behind this these cold creams. Formula is as I have covered up in the history part that we include uh, beeswax, we will include paraffins, we will include borax and along with that we need to add some kind of perfumes, colors or preservatives into our formulation to keep them stable. So, beeswax is being added, liquid paraffin, white soft paraffin, hard paraffin, borax, water and perfume. These are the main ingredients we actually add in these formulation called known as cold creams. So, um, how uh, one more question which comes to mind is that how we can prepare these cold creams in the lab. How we can prepare? First of all, we need to identify that which ingredients are water soluble and which ingredients are oil soluble. So, we need to that is dissolve our oil soluble ingredients into the oil part and the uh, that is water soluble ingredients into the water part. For solubilization, we can even use the temperature and we need to keep oil and water both at same temperature like 75 generally recommended temperature is 70 to 75 degree centigrade temperature is being uh, uh, used and we will keep our oil uh, oil far part is at 75 degree centigrade and we will also keep our water part uh, at uh, 75 degree centigrade. After that, we will mix both the ingredients, uh, gradually we will add the water part into the oil part with a trituration and, and that way we will generate the cold cream in the lab and the uh, consistencies must be that is uh, uh, must be uh, good so that we can apply we can pour those creams with from the uh, containers. So, after that we they are being they, they are being uh, that is prepared after that we pack them into uh, that is nice containers those for cold creams and even we can go, go for the quality check of those creams in the labs. After that second term which you need to know is the vanishing cream. We have covered up in the previous part the cold creams. Now, I would like to tell you about what we actually mean by vanishing cream. As the name says itself, uh, these are the creams which vanish away once they are being applied. So, these are the creams, uh, these are actually the creams which contain stearate and stearate is the agent which get vanish out when we apply those on the skin. Stearate skin creams were more commonly called as vanishing creams because they seemed to disappear when spread on the screen. As we spread these creams on the skin, they will disappear. So, the name may have been coined by the Pond's Extract Company. Pond's Extract Company was the company who gave the name to these creams as vanishing cream as they included stearate and stearate is one of the agent which get, which get vanished away when we apply on the skin. Who began making stearate uh, creams called Pond's Vanishing Cream. So, Pond's was, was the first company who started preparing these vanishing creams in 1904. 1904, they prepared first Pond's Vanishing Cream and also they given the name to these creams as day creams. We must know the difference between cold creams and vanishing creams. Actually, uh, in the last, I will like to discuss that thing also that what we, we, how we can differentiate between cold creams and vanishing creams. That is also one of the um, question which examiners usually ask related to this topic. So, uh, uh, vanishing cream, as we, uh, I, I told that in 1904, 
Pons was the first company who prepared these creams and but this was also prepared one of the company uh, that is uh, one of the person, one of the scientists who is being honored uh, as that is Burox uh, Welcome who began selling a stearate cream called, with the name Hazeline Snow in, 19, in 1892. So, in the 1892 itself, one of the scientists already generated this cream, but he was not able to give the name to this cream as vanishing cream. He made the stearate cream at that moment only, but he gave the name that is Hazeline Snow, which is later being prepared by the Ponds Company and Ponds Company gave the name that is known as your uh, that today's we uh, know these that these creams are known as vanishing creams and what is the actual purpose of this vanishing cream is and why we use this vanishing cream uh, in our day to day life. So, actually vanishing creams were advertised as beauty creams and we know, know them as a beauty creams and they are actually ap applied as a protectant to for the skin before applying any kind of a, that is what we know as cosmetic preparation to the skin. First, we always apply the vanishing cream as it acts as a protectant for the, for the skin also. So, vanishing creams are advertised as beauty creams and skin protectants, but for many a woman, their most important function was to act as a base. They, as I told, before applying any cosmetics like face powder, uh, like uh, other any kind of a, any uh, any kind of a, a cosmetic preparation on the skin, what women do at that moment of time, they apply vanishing cream as a base for the fo face powder. So, stearate and vanishing cream were known for their smooth, dry feel on the skin. Once they are being applied. The, it will vanish out, it will not give a feel of a, a occlusion or it will not give a feel of a cooling sensation, there will be no sensation after applying these creams. So, that is why these were uh, preferred by most of the that is women and they applied them as a base for the cosmetic applications. So, stearate vanishing creams were known as known for its smoothness, they were known for its dry feel on the skin and they were actually give they give a pearly sheen to our skin when once they are applied as a base uh, before applying any cosmetics. So, chemically but as we can say uh, in the my previous uh, like slides I have told you that cold creams were water in oil type, but as you can see vanishing creams are oil in water type of preparation as you can see here that these preparations are oil in water whereas as you can see these are oil in water type of preparations where uh, as uh, whereas I have told that uh, that is cold creams were uh, water in oil types uh, emulsions uh, consisting of stearic acid, alkali and a polyol and water. Now, what main ingredients are being included within these creams are stearic acid, alkali, polyols and water. As I told in my previous cold cream, cold cream was containing beeswax, borax, spectrolactams, but vanishing cream generally contains these three ingredients like stearic acid, alkali, polyols. Along with that, we also add water into these creams. The alkali reacts with some of the stearic acid as in the cold creams, borax was reacting with the beeswax. In this case, what happens is the that is our alkaliks which were which was being included within the formulation of these vanishing creams alkali reacts with the stearic acid and the best was triple pressed to form a soap which then function as a emulsifiers once it has it reacts with the that is once alkali reacts with the that is uh, our stearic acid it generates a soap and which their uh, function as a emulsifier in the cream so oil in water type cream is there and the emulsifier which is being added into this is your uh, reaction between stearic acid and the alkalis. So, the polyol uh, which is being incorporated within this formulation help to soften and protect the skin like polyol which is being generally used within this preparation is glycerin. Glycerin we incorporate into these formulations so that they make the cream soften, they soften the creams, give a feel of softness and protect the skin and prevent the chaps from the skin. So, these vanishing creams, the glycerin which is being incorporated into these creams act as hemoctanates. Now, what we mean by hemoctanate is 
Hematins are the agents which absorb water from the air. These are the agents which will absorb the water from the air and give a feel of that is coolness and glycerin will that is keeps our skin hydrated even after hours uh, we can see that that our skin will remain hydrated because glycerin will act as a hemoctant. Hemoctants are the agents which will absorb the water from the air which help to prevent uh, the vanishing cream from drying out. The vanishing cream will not dry out because glycerin is being incorporated into these, uh, these formulations and it will also enhance the shelf life of our product that is known as vanishing cream. However, we have to pack these creams as we see that when we uh, these are vanishing in nature, stearate get vanished out when, uh, when, when applied. So, that is why need, they need to be packed in a highly tightly closed jar containers. So, packaging must be good for these kind of products as you, if, we, you, if you want to increase the self life of this product. Uh, the packaging of these creams was being done in a jar with a screw top lid having a uh, that is uh, which, which, which was generally lid was mainly made up of that is known as aluminium um, in the back. But nowadays it has been replaced by the various other ingredients, various other type of uh, that is pa packaging materials as uh, technologies goes on increasing technologies evolves. So, new type of uh, that is uh, packaging materials are also being incorporated so that they can uh, store or they can trap the moisture within the cream. So, nowadays what is being used is your plastic, plastic lids are being uh, uh, replaced uh, uh, that is aluminum uh, lids were being replaced by the plastic uh, that is lids. So, there were limits to how much polyol we can incorporate as glycerin or as polyol are the agents which are hemoctant in nature, but we need to optimize those ingredients. We cannot use in excess or we cannot use them in less quantity. There are all uh, as we know formulation need to be optimized, whatever formulations we are going to prepare formulations need to be optimized to so that we get a stable product later on and we can enhance the self life of our, of our product. So, optimization is one of the main major thing need to be taken care of. So, in this case as polyols need to be optimized, they cannot be added in large quantity or they cannot be in, uh, incorporated in less quantities. So, limit of polyols should be optimum within the formulation part. So, if too much uh, was used, the polyol would absorb water from the air as glycerin is, uh, is act as hemoctant. So, it will absorb moisture from the air. The water layer you can see at the top of the that is preparation. If in large amount we add polyols, it will absorb water from the air and it will make a uh, that is our face powder which we apply on the skin they will create a spot or they will create a that is uh, skin will uh, sh that moisture will generate on the skin it, if it has been used as a base. So, repowdering is necessary uh, time to time if such if polyol concentration is more in case of vanishing cream. So, we need to optimize in optimum quantity we can add only the uh, polyols if in it is they are in large quantity they will definitely uh, that is uh, increase the moisture content and we need to repowder after applying it as a base. So, selection of alkali also affect that is formulation part. How the selection impact that it will impact the consistency of the cream. Sodium soft soaps made with alkalis like sodium hydroxide or borax produce harder creams. So, one more thing we need to keep in mind while preparing our formulation that is vanishing cream that one thing is that we need to control the quantity of our alkalis but uh, that is polyols we are adding. Along with that we need to have a check on the alkalis to which kind of alkalis like sodium we have uh, where there are we have we are available with lot of alkalis av are available in the market like sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, borax etc are available. But we need to know which type of alkali is most suitable for our preparation. So, sodium soap soaps made with alkali like sodium hydroxide or borax produce harder creams. When we add sodium hydroxide in our preparation as an alkali, it will produce harder creams and with a poor sheen. Why? 
potassium so so soaps on the other hand when we uh, add instead of uh, sodium hydroxide we add potassium hydroxide those creams were much more softer as compared to the creams which were prepared using sodium hydroxide. So, uh, that is uh, uh, potassium hydroxide make a soft softer cream and the cream with good consistency as compared to the creams which were prepared by using that is sodium hydroxide. So, uh, some early vanishing creams uh, called uh, were known as as I told in my previous slide that they were uh, also known as snow creams at that in the history part. So, in those creams actually the agents or alkalis which were being incorporated were carbonates and bicarbonates, but what was the main problem with carbonates and bicarbonate was that CO2 is being released within the preparation and it will create bubbles at the surface of our creams. So, that is why we generally avoid using carbonates within our preparation the scientists which work later on they instead of using carbonates they replace the carbonates with alkali they replaced with sodium hydroxide, but as sodium hydroxide was also generating some problems like harder or poor sheen creams. So, uh, sodium hydroxide was also being replaced by the what we call as nowadays uh, potassium hydroxide. So, these are the ingredients which are being incorporated into the, our formulation as you can see the formula we have included stearic acid, we can include glycerin, we can include potassium hydroxide, water, gum tragacant, alcohol and perfumes. So, these are the ingredients which we incorporate into the uh, formulations to generate a industrial product to a stable product which we can sell in the market. So, in this way this formula got generated and uh, as I told stearic acid is the agent which is which will get vanish out, glycerin is the agent which act as a emactant potassium hydroxide will make a soap and emulsifier and gum tragacant will maintain the consistency of our product uh, that is known as vanishing creams and perfumes and alcohols are also being incorporated in the preparation. So, how we can prepare on the same grounds we can prepare our vanishing cream as we have prepared cold creams two parts we need to take water soluble and oil soluble mix them properly at a same temperature so that we can get a good emulsion form, uh, cold creams are water in oil and vanishing creams are oil in water kind of emulsion. So, in that way from this whole lecture you can differentiate between cold creams and vanishing creams that at their definition part on the basis of their emulsion part that they are one is cold cream is oil in water, water in oil and vanishing creams are oil in water type. We can differentiate that these creams are actually uh, that is uh, uh, and cre cold creams are being used as uh, that is uh, night creams and vanishing creams are also being used as a day cream. So, we need to find out the differences between cold creams and vanishing cream along uh, with the definition part with their method of preparation there with their formula formulation characteristics on the basis of formulation characteristics. So, we can differentiate our cold creams and vanish vanishing creams. So, this is all about for today's session. So, these are the references which you can follow for your uh, this cosmetics part. So, thank you so much.